as a matter of fact, uh, I did I did Sanford's for the most part uh, after Happy Days, but you see I go way back with Red Fox when when I was beginning my career as a as a as a stand up comic and uh, we had befriended each other over the years. Uh, indeed, he was if if anything a mentor and. Uh, it was kind of like a, what can I say, a godfather, you know? Uh, 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 he, he, he was just as, probably the most naturally funniest human beings I've ever known in my lifetime. Uh, and I'm not saying it's because you're up there now, Red. This is the truth. <laughs> but as an example, the first time we met, he had a, he had a little... Uh, a club on uh, La Siena here in LA, and it was called Foxes, of course, and a um, little small place that he bought, uh, it was called the Slate Brothers before that, highly, highly popular inside nightclub little joint where no food, just a club, uh, uh, drinks and entertainment, great jazz and all of that, and he continued that. Had, had a tough time, but uh, I, I had moved uh, I had been in L.A. at that time uh, for oh, five or six years. I heard he was down there, and he was going to take over the old Slate Brothers. So I go down there, and uh, I had—he didn't remember, but I had met him in San Francisco several years prior when I was just breaking into the business. And so I introduced myself. Hi, Red. I'm uh, I'm, I'm Pat Morita, and I'm a comic, uh, and I'd like to to work for you. And he goes like, Pat Maroney, Pat, Mar Pat Marano, Pat Marie. That sounds Italian. Why don't you go out and get a good Japanese name like Honda, Mitsubishi, Panasonic, <laughs> <laughs> Sony, you know. <laughs> so it was, it was always a, a little thing between us. He refused to say my name because he always insisted it sounded Italian or. Spanish or something, you know, but <laughs> we, we, we became tight friends over the years and uh, he knew that uh, I would go on the road every now and then because uh, still getting work as, as a comic and uh, but he told me after he had gotten his uh, show, Sanford and Son, because I'd, I'd see him every now and then anyway at his house and, and visit and stuff. And he once said, you know, uh, uh, drop on by the studio because you, you never know. Uh, there might be something for you that, I don't care if it's a couple of lines or what. And, th and the be <laughs> beginning of it was uh, Salt Turtle Tub and uh, Bernie Ornstein, yes. Oh, by the way, I remember them from the Hollywood Palace. They wrote for the Hollywood Palace years prior. Anyway, now they're in, they're in, in, they're in doing Sanford and Son. And uh, uh, I, I drop by like Red asks, and there's nothing in the script. And uh, so he says, uh, Pat Maroney, Pat, Pat Renuni, Pat, Patrick, uh, Mickey Rooney, one of them little short guys. This <laughs> is my pal. They write something for him. So they scurry around. They write a little, a s a small piece of a character where I'm, I'm uh, Damon Wilson's, uh, the son's uh, good friend, kind of a pal. And uh, uh, so we, we go through the process, you know, rehearsal and this, that, and the other. And in the beginning, uh, you know, and Red did the greatest kind of insult humor. Uh, so the, the, the episode opens, and I'm Demond has hurt his back, uh, helping uh, uh, unload the old pickup or something, and I'm propping him up. And Red walks in, and some uh, these aren't the words, but but par paraphrasing is, how many times I tell you not to hang out with them kind of people, you're gonna get the yellow fever. So during rehearsals, I said, yeah, well, then what you got, the Black Plague? <laughs> so afterwards, <clears throat> during notes, 
Saul comes down and says, Pat, you can't do that. You gotta remember, Red's the star. He gets all the funny lines. Red overhears it. He says, how many times did I tell you, God damn it, this is a comedian. He's gonna, gonna be an actor one day. You gotta give him something to do. Jesus. I mean, he goes off, you know, as he would do. So they kept it. They kept it in the, they kept it in the show. You know, don't fool around with them. People, you're gonna you're gonna catch the yellow fever. Yeah, and what you got? The black plague? I mean, it's you can't do that kind of humor to today anymore. Much. Here and there a little bit. I don't know, but I got an interesting story to tell you about that too. Uh, between <clears throat> excuse me, between shooting seasons, Red would take, put together a two and a half hour variety extravaganza as a road company, and he would play prisons. This is on his own expense now. He, uh, I got to see some of the worst places in the world. But on the other hand, he also took us to Carnegie Hall, the only time I ever played Carnegie Hall, and the Apollo Theater. We did, uh, there's a place in Washington, D.C., I forget the name of it now, it doesn't matter, but they were trying to resurrect their history and, and, and rejuvenate their, their uh, 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 being, but it didn't work out. Nonetheless, we get to the Apollo Theater, here I am in the heart of black America, Harlem. I'd always heard about it. I'd never been to 125th in Lenox, right? So we open and and it's, uh, and I'm talking about big show, you know, we, we got people like Arthur Prysock closing the first half. And my job was to come out, do five minutes and MC the rest of the program. Okay. So about the th third or fourth day that we're there, uh, I decided, well, I've seen Harlem at night. I'm gonna go in to work like early, early and go walk around during the daytime. And uh, so I do. And I'm walking up and down the street, the neighborhood. And I see, except for the people who happen to be black, they, there was like Woolworths and flower shops and you know, uh, New York style little streets, uh, a, a, a little mama papa stores of every ilk, dry cleaners, you name it, restaurants. So now I'm standing at a, a street corner waiting for the light to change to walk back to the theater. And I hear this little buzz behind me. Oh, man, you, I'm, I'm telling you, you ask him, I go ask him, you ask him. Get a little tap on the shoulder. Turn around, he's like an 11 year old. Kid looks at me, he goes, hey man, is you sneeze? I go, sneeze? Yeah, I chew. <laughs> you I chew on Sanford, huh? <laughs> yeah, ask me. Yeah, I said, I, to I, to I told you I was sneeze, man. Wanna buy some papers? <laughs> Everybody in New York's got a game. You wanna buy a wrist wristwatch that I just Got from some guy down the street. I mean, Any, you know, it gave it gave it just sucked me into the flavor and the heartbeat of the whole community, uh, and had of course an enormous time playing the Apollo with Red.